Hi, Chris. Hello. Oh my, my gosh, it's that day. We, we would have done Monday, mm-hmm. but you had some roof leaks. Yes. <laughs> well, you know what's really crazy is this is supposed to be the month of all water. All I've listened to is that people were going to be either drowning in water and not literally <laughs> drowning in water or hurricanes and all these storms. And so when you said that you had roof leak, I'm thinking, well, that's just apropos for July, August, September, and October. Mm-hmm. Everything gets fixed? Yeah, I thought it was. So it happened after my shower. And I, so I thought it was my shower because my shower is right above the garage here. And uh, then come to find out it was actually my washing machine is, uh, you know, it's like it's overflowing or some, there's something wrong with it. So it was the washing machine, not the shower. <laughs> Well, you're very lucky and it's, I'm glad you got it all taken care of. I've got to tell you, Chris, I was listening to, first of all, I don't even have to introduce you, but I will. This is Chris Rapp. He's my minnow pond. He's also a winning pond. And he also, didn't you start a new channel, Chris Rapp? Yeah, Chris Rapp. Yep. And how do you, you want everybody to go to Chris Rapp? Yeah, of course. What do, you, what do you do on Chris Rapp? Is it a podcast? Are you doing the same thing? What are you doing with Chris Rapp? Yeah, it's everything i'm gonna i'm starting my podcast back up so it's gonna be a podcast it's gonna be uh you know right now we have a bunch of um stuff from old courses that i put together up there for like goal setting uh living your dream life all that good stuff um and we're also uh, gonna be putting stuff about up about content creation on there as well so uh you know it's all about that i already am i um, love I, that. I, I do want to tell you am. though for everyone just sign up or follow chris and anything mm-hmm. because it's he is so well versed, and every time I say to somebody, I'm listening to Minnow Pond or Chris <laughs> on, they always go, I just love Chris Rat. <laughs> so, I think you should have a sign that says, I just love yeah, Chris Rat because it's a good idea. <laughs> you put it up whenever you're with anybody. Um, I, I want to tell you, I did, do, I, I have a subject that I want to bring up, and then some parts, but uh, I did, I was listening to the uh, tarot, you know, I can't do it while I'm here, but I, I turned it on. And from the first moment that I heard your, that you, you put up this free tarot. Oh, yeah. some, um, I've already gotten, when we come back, people who want to take the other course. Cause I know you, mm-hmm. of course, but what, what really, you know, I know you read cards so well and why I'm bringing this up and you started with the fool mm-hmm. and I just loved it because there wasn't anything I saw. I do read intuitive what is the, right. intuitive right. you do, but you started bringing up images about the sleeve, the torn sleeve, and that you know, and the I know the little um, the Fe- little that, feather. That, oh yeah, and the fe- feather I didn't catch, but then that's what I was gonna say. What I always see with the bull is the knapsack, and I always say it brings little karma into the picture of this life. But you read it. I mean, I never thought about the feather. <laughs> Never thought about the ice sounds. And my goodness gracious, I certainly didn't get the tattered sleeves. So you brought to me new light and I do read intuitively. So I do focus on, like you said, one part of the card and you gave a really good example um, for everybody out there that it, it's a free course. I don't, I don't even have to tell you, I don't have to go on to this because uh, <laughs> next thing is I'm going to take his next course, but it is free, and I don't want to be little, be belong it so much. But if you read cards, you want to listen to this. And I've read, I've been reading cards for a very long time. Anyway, kudos to thank, you, Chris. Thank you, because it is wonderful. We we talked about. I was on the show on Wednesday, and we were talking about paranormal. Oh, yeah, and I asked you, yeah, what you thought about it, but I didn't get into too many things. Have you ever been on a paranormal investigation? Uh, no, no, but I, so I used to work at a cafe that, um, burnt down. So it was, it was part of a hotel and the the hotel, a bunch of people died in this uh, hotel What? and they turned the hotel that burned down into like, um, a bunch of shops, you know, they rebuilt it after and, um, you know, they turned it into shops. And so I think that was haunted. So not really an investigation, but. Um, yeah, well, I had a, one, one time I was closing with a, this girl and we were kind of like facing like this, tor- facing towards each other. And we were, you know, talking and everything. And we both turned at the same time uh, towards the door because we thought someone was standing there. And we, and we both, 
that was like major confirmation for me that the place was haunted because like at exactly the same time we turned to look because we thought someone was standing, you know, to the side of us and there was, there was no one there. So, uh, yeah. That just gives me confirmation is what I was going yeah. to tell you. You are a medium. You just don't, you, <laughs> you, you don't put that part of it. And you are a medium when you read intuitively with cards. Right. So, I do want you to know that when people say you're a medium and you kind of say, oh, everybody says I'm a medium, Chris, you are a big medium. Because I knew that when you walk into a place like that, I mm -hmm. knew you would. What was your first? Let's go back to that moment. What was your first impression after when you turned around? Was it was it that you thought something weird, unusual? That, were, you, were you scared? Mm -hmm. What was your first impression? I thought it was a customer because it, it was on the other side of the, the bar that we had, you know, that was in front of the door kind of. And so I thought it was a customer. I was like turning to go greet a customer. It, it looked like out of the corner of my eye, it just looked like a person. And so that wasn't my first experience there. I used to cook, uh, cook in the basement there as well. And my boss was really a big guy. He was like six foot five or over. I don't know. He was really, really tall and he was just like a big dude. And I, so I used to work in the basement and we, I couldn't really hear down there because there was like a lot of loud stuff going on. Um, but like all the time since I started working, when I started working down there, I would see something like a big dude standing out of the corner of my eye and I would look and he, I, I thought it was him. And there, there, there were times where I would be like, oh, hey, Dave was his name. And I would like say, say his name. And uh, it, then it wasn't, but it wasn't him. So, um, you know, I had experiences before that one, but, you know, with another person there actually seeing it, it was, um, you know, it's major confirmation. I love that. Did that spark your interest? Because. Did that spark you? Just the paranormal? Did you ever look into the equipment they use, or did you just decide that wasn't really the direction you wanted to go? I, I think um, like when I was like twelve, probably is when Ghost Hunters, the show, came out, and I was I was interested in that before you know that show I loved before uh, I even started working there. So it was probably that show that really made me interested. Well, I have somebody that's asking a question to you. Did you ever feel tired in that a lot in that space? My house has spirits and oh, I always feel drained. That's a different story. Mm -hmm. But have you, how did you feel when you were, it's a good question. How do you, how did you feel when you were working? I felt fine for the most part. I mean, I've always had good people in my life who, you know, taught me to protect myself before, you know, before I even worked there. So, you know, I think I was probably, I probably was coming from a place where, you know, I already knew not to give my ener energy away and things like that. So I, I always felt fine. I am so so glad, and you do protect your you. Yeah. you somebody told me you protect yourself and your in your environment, which mm -hmm. a lot of people don't. A lot of people forget to do that. Like, but you know we <laughs> we we all are guilty of something, right? So, uh, did you have, have any? And the thing about paranormal, I went into um, the reason I asked is I used to belong to the Par Ohio Paranormal Society mm -hmm. in Florida, so it was always remote. You would be really good doing um they're usually you know people who volunteer mm. but every area has them and especially where you live right now it's really interesting um and and the equipment that they use is for what's funny is the equipment is validation yeah. to me and you can hear you know on if you listen to some of the recordings you can hear mm -hmm. that but my big thing is to really feel the spirits or I don't really, I believe it's looping energy anyway, but to feel what was there and to create a story. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like you'd be really good at it should you ever want to do something like that because um, you have the mindset to do it. And it's really cool. So it's something that if you ever get a chance to go on to a paranormal investigation, I'm sort of sure one of the mm. teams take you. Yeah, of course. You probably be able to add a lot to it mm -hmm. so I, i'm glad i was gonna say i have to stay up late though i, I can't i'm no i'm no good after eight o'clock at night so <laughs> well you do know that the spirits don't have to be there at night true like even morning or afternoon and example have you ever been to um uh where was i charleston no it was was it santa Barbara when i had that have you been, ever been to savannah georgia I've been through Georgia. I don't think I've ever been to Savannah or it, uh, not at, le at least not to stop. Well, Savannah has a lot of old yeah. history and a lot. And I'm not sure. I, I don't like the word hauntings because that makes me feel like weird. So mm -hmm. 
they have a lot of soldier still there and a lot of hospitals and a lot of um, the war and all that stuff. And I was driving on one of the buses and I, I didn't know I was passing one of the hospitals, but I could see the soldiers. I could see everything passed. So why I'm saying this is, and that was during the morning. Oh, yeah. So we will make accommodations if you don't want okay. to do it in the morning. Now, I know that I'm going to bring in some pieces of equipment and I'm going to I'll go through quick uh, pieces of equipment later, maybe during maybe October. Or something oh, like nice. That. Yeah. Because I think it's interesting and I think it started people thinking about um, the paranormal, the metaphysical, the mediumship. I think it kind of led into that. How many years ago? 20 years. What was that first show? Like 20 yeah, years pro- ago? probably 20 years ago, at least. Yep. And when they put, that was my first time when I saw it on television. It was the one from Pennsylvania. I love that team for anybody who watched Oh, it. yeah. That was the uh, Paranormal State. Yeah. 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 Did you? Uh, yeah, I watched all of them. <laughs> yeah, me too. And I, that's what I started wanting to do it, wanting to get into it. It isn't my thing. I don't like to, there's things mm-hmm. that you can get into that you really need, you know, you really need your wits about you. Yeah. And I'm not that wit girl. I like the fluffy and the nice but I don't like getting into the dirty and gritty. So, oh, yeah. And sometimes you have to do that. Anyway, I do want to also tell you, I pulled some cards, um, but before I, we, we pull cards, I just wanted to tell you that for everybody out there, like, please um, go to Chris Rep, go to Minnow Pond, go to anything that you seek. De- is debt makers not off still? I. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're it's kind of closed down. There's a secret way to get in, but it's a secret. And uh, so, um, Dead Makers is closed for now. We're we're kind of like in a guinea pig stage, and everybody in there is a, a guinea pig for my testing purposes. So uh, they're all they're all going through a bunch of stuff in there. Um, so yeah, that's where that that's at right now. Well, if you need another guinea pig, yes, I of course, like- Bonnie, Bonnie, you can come in anytime. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, you name your dinosaur after right. I might as well. Anyway. Yeah here and that's the reason i don't think i'm not problem is i've got it, this where i am in louisville what we're doing sometimes i don't even have a breath so that's mm-hmm. um for everybody i think we're going to start pulling cards and what i'd like you to do chris after i pull my cards is i'd like you to pull a card for today and there's a reason so mm-hmm. i don't want to tell you yet but i'd like you to pull one of the tarot cards for before we go into all of the astrology so i want to say hello to Again, we see you. I'm so happy to be here with you. First of all, I want to start with, I pulled a card. And then I thought, you know, every time I pull a card, I say, this is Chris's card. <laughs> I all do that. So what I did is I pulled you your own card. Okay, good. So what I pulled for everyone, and I love this for everyone out there, because, I mean, we still are in Mercury retrograde, which I want to talk a little bit about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I... I just feel like everyone needs a lift. And so when I asked what card everyone would like to have today and what would, you know, help people today on the show, this is what came out. And it says, it is the sweet pea. It says, your wishes are coming true. Oh, love it. So again, and it is, you're part of the show and I'm part of the show. So everyone out there, this is the card I built for you. It means that everything is possible. And what you're working on or what you're wishing for and what you're going to ask us today is really going to hopefully come true. We'll let you know. But this is the card that tells me that, yes, it is. And it says, what your heart has been longing for is getting closer mm. each day. Not there yet, guys, but it's coming closer. So then I pulled a card for you, Chris. <laughs> and Let's see. It, it, it <laughs> doesn't. You yeah. don't know Every time. And again, I just want to show everybody the death. Okay. It's pretty thick. Mm-hmm. You are a spiritual teacher. Yep. It's focus. Share your wisdom with <laughs> others. You are born to teach. <laughs> now, Interesting. I think, I know, and I want to say hello to April. I know she's here. April, this is his card. <laughs> um, I hope you understand that every time I look at Chris and I think of Chris and I read these, this is probably the most car, the card that comes out the most for him. Mm-hmm. He is a spiritual teacher. So I had to let everybody know. <laughs> so I had Chris pull card. Yeah, I 
got uh, King of Swords, uh, which would be kind of a spiritual teacher too. Uh, you know, he has the most knowledge and wisdom out of all the tarot, uh, out of all the tarot cards, really. Um, but the King of Swords card of discernment. Um, it's really funny that um, I so when I put this deck down, it was upside down. He actually came out in reverse. I don't read reversals. Not you know, all my cards are the same way. And um, but you know, we still have the Mercury retrograde going on. So it's funny that he came up in reverse because uh, you know, this Mercury retrograde is now in Virgo, and you know, it's Mercury spin in Virgo, and the he's all about discernment and looking at the details and virgo is very detail oriented um you know i think also what's really interesting is we have like a grand earth trying today between uh venus uranus and pluto and even though uh technically pluto's at zero degrees which is kind of a little bit of a wild card but um you know it is interesting because the grand trying kind of it's all of those three planets are help kind of helping each other out that's how i look at the the trines they're all kind they're kind of lifting each other up and so, you know, I think it would be a good time to get down, down to the details, look, look at the nitty, nitty gritty details of all the little things that you're working on. And uh, I've been telling people to do this for like weeks. So, yeah. I love that. Don't put the card away. But somebody just asked how you and I met. So I, I <laughs> say in a past life, we met on a riverboat with big mm-hmm. you know, moonlight and all kinds of stuff. But since I could be his mother or <laughs> be his mother, how we met is really a cool story. Chris was on YouTube and, and Spirit kept saying to me, because I just started my, 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 I think it was Block Talk. I just yep. started and it was, it was going full blast. I was really, and they said, go to YouTube and whoever you land on will bring you. And so I just, I mean, I never in my life, I woke up at two, three in the morning and it turned to Minnow Pond and that was Chris. And so I asked him if he'd like to be on my show. I, I'm not sure, Chris, how many you had, because I don't want to. Not a lot. Not a lot. Yeah. And I knew when I read him, because, you know, because I just thought, what, what do I have to offer Chris? Because he's so good and he's just getting started on YouTube. Not that he was just getting started. And what I knew when I saw him was that he was going to be so successful mm-hmm. that I, knew I didn't have to worry about him. I didn't even need my show, but I put him on and it took, I'm, you know, I, I, I want to say it took off like wildfire from there. That's how we met. Do you have a different story? No, pretty much the same. I had, I had no subscribers and uh, at the time, Bonnie used oh, to fine. tell me, she used to tell me all the time that I would have 10,000, which I didn't even believe because no one, when I, when, you know, back in the day when I started, that was like over almost 10 years ago now. Um, no, no reader had more than 10,000 subs, uh, no, even astrologer, which actually when, when I started astrology was kind of, uh, was more popular on YouTube. So the, all those astrology people had like 10,000 subscribers. Um, so yeah, Bonnie told me I would have more than 10,000. I didn't believe it. <laughs> I, and I told you, and I looked at you and I said, and by the end of the year, you would have a million and I'm assuming that's your channel. So everybody, please go. If you haven't subscribed, please tell your friends. But, you know, something hit me the other night. And with all your different channels, it might be everybody added up because, you yeah, know, it's, it's good. It's, you know, all added up. It's over. It would be over 900,000 between all of them. So, oh, we have another. Alrighty. We have another. Yeah. And I know I'm going to. Right. Well, it's not. Me. <laughs> that's how good you are. So now um, that's how we met. I want to everybody. Thank you for asking, because I always love to tell that mm-hmm. story. Um. But Chris, I want you to pull the card again out. Yeah. And just like you did on your, your, uh, there, I want you to go through the card for everyone since it's the card of the day. Yeah. The, uh, King of Swords. So the King of Swords is, uh, there's not a ton of imagery on the King of Swords, but there is, there are some important things. Some, he's a king. He's sitting, uh, facing forward as well. And so he's kind of, there are only uh, two kings that are facing forward, him and the uh, King of Pentacles, of course. Although the King of Pentacles even is kind of like sitting, you know, off to the side. He's a little bit cockeyed on his card, card, right? So he's very forward thinking. And, you know, that's what I always think of with the King of Swords. He has the knowledge and wisdom. Uh, he also has his sword up. So he's ready for battle. Um, you know, one thing I like to remind people about, um, you know, the King of Swords is he has been through the, mo- the most battles. And, you know, the other thing about him is that he uses his words, right? The sword, it would be uh, words, intellect, things like that, uh, because he understands like, you know, something I also think about that I don't think people think about with the King of Swords is that like he understands the consequences 
of battle. You know, he, you know, a lot of people, you know, if he comes up in a reading and someone's thinking about going into battle for something like, like a legal battle or something like that, I always think of the consequences because, you know, it's like one thing to go to war, but like most people don't think about the consequence of doing that. Right. And so, um, you know, I always think about with, the, uh, with him that he kind of represents the, the consequences. He also has the, um, a butterfly, uh, right here above his head. He actually has like a couple of butterflies that are kind of hard to see behind him. And so, uh, the, you know, the butterflies just represent transformation, uh, but he would, you know, of course, transform things with his thoughts and he transforms knowledge into wisdom. And so, you know, you can learn something all day long, but wisdom is actually do, taking what you learn, putting it into practice and getting the, the, that extra little bit of knowledge that you get from putting something into practice. Uh, so that, you know, that's always the imagery that stands out to me uh, with him. I love that. And that's why I needed you to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So today, how would you say that card works for everyone? Yeah, we've all been learning a lot. So I think that it's time for everyone to take the lessons of the last 20 years, Pluto and Capricorn, and start uh, putting into practice the things that you've been learning. So all those, whenever you have one of those thoughts, like I've been learning how to do this, but I, ha I haven't been doing it. Like maybe you've been learning how to start a business, but you haven't been actually starting the business or you've been learning how to have love in your life. And uh, you, you might not be like learning from a book, but you might have had a lot of crappy relationships over the last 20 years. And through that, hopefully you have learned something. And now it's time to, you know, put into practice what you have learned. So I think people, you know, um, have about like three years or so in, uh, to really take what they've learned over the last 20 years and to kind of put that into something, whether it's, you know, creating the ultimate relationship, the ultimate business, the ultimate, um, you know, health, whatever it is that you've been learning about. And I would create like the best version of that. I love that. I love everything you said about it because people, I mean, you know, I'm so sick of hearing people say such negative things, mm. you know, for this next month. And I just don't want to think about it. So when I look at your cards and your readings, and by the way, everyone thinks that when, or everybody that I talk to and people on here, your readings are incredible because they are, they really give the real life mm -hmm. and message. And you're so spot on. So I love that. And I like the idea of pulling a card each mm -hmm. time. So people mm -hmm. actually, if they can't, you know, look at your vid, that we can actually go through a card. Do you, when you look at card colors and you look at that king, what color stands out to you? Um, he's blue, but the red, you know, he's got kind of like this reddish orange uh, right here, but it, it's kind of covered by the blue. So again, he understands battle. Uh, like I was saying, you know, he, it's kind of like the, the red, which would be the, you know, the fighting, the battle is kind of dampened by the blue, if you want to say it, or covered by the blue. So again, he, he could go to battle. He would absolutely, um, you know, absolutely win any battle he enters into, but it's kind of like tamed by that uh, blue color, his cloak and also, you know, his uh, cape or whatever he's wearing behind him as well. I love that. And think about Virgo. Yep. That's a perfect, you know, for Virgo. Is there anything in the sky that you can tell us? I know that we've got, what, two days until, I maybe we have one more day? The 24th. What's today? The 23rd? Uh, uh, today is the 23rd. Yes. Doesn't Mercury go, go direct on the 24th? It's uh, te technically the 28th, I believe, oh. is the, uh, you know, 27th, 28th, depending on where you are in the world. Yeah, wait, um, I don't know why, because then I don't have to say it's <laughs> retrograde. Anymore. It bothered me because it really didn't. But, you know, I, 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 I always look and think, okay, when is it ending? When is it ending? So it must be that something is going on. I just don't realize it. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you feel? Is there anything in the sky we need to look at this? Week? Uh, this week, I would say, um, you know, it's like we still have that Jupiter Mars conjunction, although it's, it's like off by a couple of degrees probably this week, because I think, uh, Jupiter's at like 18 degrees and Mars is somewhere around like 22 degrees or something like that. Uh, but Mars, you know, 22 degrees is the master, num the master builder, uh, number. So with Mars and Gemini with Jupiter there, again, look at your chart, wherever, whatever house you have, uh, Gemini in, uh, I, I, I would be putting in some sort of work into whatever house that is. So you're going to have to run your own chart. But I, you know, to me, that's all about action. Uh, master builder is a pain in the butt. I will say like 22 is my least favorite degree, although it's not a bad degree. Uh, it's like get to work and you have to follow these rules and do these things uh, to build something a certain way. So usually it requires a lot of work to 
build whatever it is. But again, I would, you know, if I were, if I, I am looking at where Jupiter, you know, where Jupiter and Mars are for me in Gemini uh, right now and working on those areas in my life. It's funny. Mine is, for example, mine's in my fourth house and I had to fix that leak uh, that happened in my house. Right. So um, yeah, that's like one example. I would love to not. I never look at my chart. I don't look at it often enough, but I am going to look at it because I have it, but I'll have to look at it and see where it is. I love that great example. And so um, any words of wisdom before we get for people? Yeah, I would say also, um, you know, Grand Earth trying right now, it's not going to last long. Mar uh, Mercury moves pretty quickly. Mercury is also at 22 degrees, by the way. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, you know, is it really, a, you know, could you argue that it's not really a grand earth trine? Probably because, again, Pluto's at zero degrees, so it's right on the cusp of uh, Capricorn and Aquarius, and it's uh, retrograding back into Capricorn currently. And so, you know, again, you, you could say it's a little bit of a wild card, but I would still uh, work on your communication. I would still, if you have any crazy ideas, definitely I would work on those ideas, especially if they're crazy ideas that have to do with something that you were already doing in the past. Um, not because of Mercury either, but because of Pluto. You know, Pluto is rebirth. And, you know, this grand trine is between uh, Pluto, Uranus, and Venus. So if any of those like out there, crazy, innovative, random ideas you come up with, um, you know, putting work into those things would also be a good idea. Wow. I love that also. You've got a question here. What does Saturn retrograde? Yeah, Saturn, I, so Saturn retrograde, again, um, everything, I, I think everything in astrology connects. You know, I, I listen to a lot of astrologers and they'll say this, that, or, you know, this is going on, that is going on. But I look at it more simply because if we could say all these things are going on, right? But, you know, again, we could boil that grand earth trying down, uh, the uh, Mars, uh, the Mars Jupiter conjunction as well. We have Neptune going retrograde in Pisces with Saturn going retrograde in Pisces. Uh, Neptune and Pisces is that big, crazy ass idea that you have for your life. And Mars says, if you get to work, you can have it. So, yeah, you know, we could have summed up everything we just said with um, Saturn and Neptune. So uh, the Neptune uh, being retrograde, adds, like actually adds some realism to the dream. So you have a crazy idea. Neptune going retrograde allows you to bring it down to Earth a little bit more. Uh, Saturn retrograde, you know, Saturn is like get to work. I, to me, it doesn't really matter if Saturn Really, I don't care about any of the big uh, the big outer planets like Neptune and uh, Pluto because they're typically generational, so they don't really affect us maybe that much on a personal level. Uh, but with Saturn, it's still the same thing. I would still get to work. It's like some people think that uh, Saturn retrograde, maybe you're like revisiting some of the rules or the structure of what you set up. Um, you know, you could be looking at your responsibilities as well. I've seen like the Ten of Wands uh, like crazy in the last two sets of readings I've done. And you know, I think that it is Saturn retrograde. Uh, the Ten of Wands is all the responsibilities you have in your life. Saturn retrograde, you might be like looking at some of the, um, you know, responsibilities you have and say this, some of these are good. Some of these are bad. Some of these belong to other people. And so I would get rid of any of the responsibilities that aren't your own, right? And uh, kind of slim it down. I love that. So I, I love to hear that about this week coming up. I I really, really, you know, Virgo's tough for me because I don't have any, I don't have, and you know what I do, Chris, I go, and people say, oh, you don't like Virgos? No, I do like Virgos. I just don't have any earth in my, in my chart. Mm -hmm. And it will be alone at mid -tay. So the thing is, when I see an earth sign, especially Virgo, and they're very ultra, ultra so I can go all about it. They're really a lot in the healthcare field. They um, usually are health oriented. And they have a lot of um, really good ideas for you and them too, which is interesting. <laughs> and um, and so they're they're very helpful people. Mm -hmm. And they say they're like Scorpio. Scorpio and Virgo have some of the same qualities, but one is of Earth and the other one is, is of emotion and water. So I I don't want anybody to think I don't like Virgos, but they're very weighted for me. They pull me down to Earth, okay. and sometimes my doesn't want to go there. Anyway, let's, let's go through the Zodiac. Sure. Uh, Aries, you have the Three of Cups. Time to get out and party, Aries. I think it, it, it's a great week for socializing. And not, um, I'm talking about next week, whatever. I don't even know what day Monday is, but whatever day Monday is, uh, I would say it's a great week for socializing in general. And the retrograde coming to an end. So I would definitely uh, get out there, socialize, um, meet new people. And sorry, I was talking about, and, and by the way, I have to correct myself because I said that the um that it was uh venus uh, that it was mercury uh is causing this grand earth trying but it's actually venus so i was wrong uh, when i was talking about that but uh because uh, mercury is currently in uh leo but 
And that just popped into my head. So I was wrong. But uh, basically all the same stuff applies. But um, anyway, we have the three of cups for Aries and um, yeah, great week for socializing. Gr a great week for getting out there. I love that. And I put wise soul, which is another one that Chris usually pulls. And the thing about Aries with the wise soul, which I love it. So Pisces is the last sign, 12, and Aries is the beginning, the alpha and the omega. So you are wise because you've been through it a, a before and you're coming out just like the fool and starting mm -hmm. over again. So that's you, Aries. Uh, uh, Taurus, you have the justice card. I mean, yeah, justice. Um, I'm, the Mercury thing messed me up. I'm, I'm going to blame the retrograde for that. But uh, <laughs> justice is all about balance. Uh, you, you know, also Libra, your co-ruler, Venus, speaking of Venus. Uh, so I think that for a lot of you, it would be a good week to... Uh, kind of like great balance through not working necessarily Taurus. I think Taurus is, um, uh, it's like time to focus on themselves. And uh, really that's what I get off of the justice card. Like take care of yourself, nurture yourself, do all those I things. I love it because the next card I pulled out for you, Taurus, is family harmony. It says your loved ones from, from form a strong pillar of support, embrace their love and put past issues behind. So that tells me, Taurus, that there might be some family issues coming up. You know, it looks like we're getting into school season. We're looking at the end of the summer. We're looking at different things going on, make holiday plans. Mm. I hate to say that we're even getting earlier for holiday plans. So this tells me some Tauruses look for family harmony. And if you don't have it, really work and strive to make it harm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Gemini, you have the Ten of Cups, really good week. Uh, I tend to just feel good feelings. I sometimes I just feel Ten of Cups is talking about uh, fortune after difficulty. So I think that there could be some improvements after some difficulties for you, Gemini. Love it. And I'm and I pulled raise your vibration. So if you've got your fortune and after difficulties, this says your intuitive feelings are accurate messages from your angels which is chris giving you the message that <laughs> if he you know what he sees for you because he's your earth angel right now uh cancer you have cancer so you showing up in a strong position uh cancer you you get the chariot with me like crazy so you know this is your energy really being present in the reading but chariot is as above so below and also taking control of your life and having a victory because of it so I think that's what cancer cancer is focused on setting setting themselves apart. I love that because I'm a cancer. Yep. But it says shield yourself. When I see this card, I'm not loving it because I always think, whoa, what did I do wrong? But it says invoke protection to bring this situation to a, a, a speedy end. So this means that cancer, you might have something going on um, that you've got to look at. And if you look at it now, Let's just put some protection around yourself. I, it doesn't even just need to be spiritual protection because we just talked, Chris and I just talked about that. And I said, I don't even put protection around. I know he does. <laughs> and I'm a cancer. So it might be just about protecting yourself, protecting your energy, that you don't get bogged down in anything that is not worth your time or your energy. Uh, Leo, you have the magician. Um, so new beginnings. I, it is a time of new beginnings for Leo. Again, I think Leo is one of the signs that's really stepping in, like completely stepping into something new over the next 20 years. So I think Leo will be one of the signs that we. I think it's time for you to reinvent yourself, um, and really step into who you are, but you, you have to listen to your heart, not ever other people as well, Leo. Um, so I think Leo has this thing where they kind of like elect, they do they make decisions based off other people. And the magician is like saying, you have to manifest your reality. I love that. Because I have to tell you something. I know I use antidotes, but my sister's Leo and somebody gave her a reading year, a couple, about two years ago and said that Leo's were going to be, that there was going to be a whole major change of mm -hmm. Leo's coming out and it's coming up when she turned 64, <laughs> which is right now 64. 64. So you are so spot on, my friend. And I think first step. So you have that whole thing about um, stepping into your power. Well, this is take that first step, Leo, because you're just going to do phenomenal things in the future. And it says breaking down the problem into tiny pieces mm. makes it easier to actually um, overcome. And I love that because people see 
like a big issue mm-hmm. where they say, God, I can't do that because I can do this, this, and this. <laughs> and if you break it down, which I know you, this is what I think they t- you teach. Yeah. And if you break it down, it, it'll, they'll all be solvable until you've solved the whole problem. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh- uh, Virgo, you have uh, the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, you have Venus in your sign. I was saying Mercury earlier, but you have Venus in your sign. Venus in your sign is great. Makes you more attractive. It is at 22 degrees. I was correct with the degree, which is like master builder number. So, you know, I think it would be a great time. And I'm pretty sure I said something in your reading today about how you look. So I, but I was I was talking about that, um, like your appear, the things that you work on. It doesn't even have to be you. It could be your business or whatever. How it appears is going to be really important for you. And that's popping into my head right now, uh, which would make sense with Venus being in your sign. So uh, to change your fortunes, change how things appear. I love that. And I have emotional healing. So you, honey, you're on the right change. And emotional healing means you are starting to feel good. You're starting to um, come into all of your emotional um, wholeness. And it says um, it's safe for you to go out and take out old emotional pain. By doing this, it leaves a space in the universe for you to build something great mm. and have wonderful um, energy come in. Because again, if we leave, if we take out negative, or I like the word challenging, but if you mm-hmm. take out challenge issues, there's a big hole. And what if you, you have the chance to fill it up with positive? And that's what I love about that. Uh- Libra, you have the Eight of Wands. Eight of Wands is a quick success, um, you know, quick conclusion. It's also your uh, focus, what you are, the, kind of the direction you are focusing on. Uh, I think that this is you starting to like see things hit. Um, some of these wands hit sooner than others. So I think you're starting to see the fruits of your labor, whatever you've been trying to manifest. And when I pull the laughter card, this is another one I go, oh, what, what <laughs> laugh? It means that you're on your way to success and happiness. Because when you're in your way to success and happiness, you smile and laugh. And then everyone around you smiles and laughs too, which is why when they say when you laugh, it's contagious. Start laughing, Libra, because you're beautiful. You have Venus in your chart. You have Venus. I think Venus rules uh, Libra. Libra. Yeah. So please, please smile and laugh. Even if the situation doesn't look like you need to, just start laughing. You'll see what change it uplifts everybody's, including your thoughts. Uh, Scorpio, Scorpio, I think that you have to like let go of your one little claw. I think you're holding on to something with one claw, not the other. So I think it's time for Scorpio to, you know, release part of their old story. It wouldn't surprise me if uh, a lot of Scorpios have like just a, like a, some sort of little thorn in their side that they're trying to release. And I feel like the two of pentacles saying, release it. Two of pentacles work hard, play hard. So it just says, you know, have more fun in life. Um, you know, not everything has to be work. And you, you know, Scorpios, they take everything to the bottom of the barrel level and then they come right up like the Phoenix. <laughs> you know, right. You go down and they make the best of friends. And by the way, I know I always say this, but they're the most sexiest sign. <laughs> oh, yes, very true. Yeah. So and and and, you know, people say that Scorpios and a lot of the readers are Scorpios on YouTube. But um, but what is interesting is that. They say they have such intense stares and looks that they look like they're seeing through you. Mm-hmm. So it's cool if anybody knows Scorpios. And I, I've got a full chart of Scorpios. I got kids and friends and everything else that have a lot of Scorpio. No, that is true. And open your heart, Scorpio. Scorpio, mm. you're secretive. Open your heart. This tells me when I see the red rose, and I love roses, as you all know. It says you're powerful um, and, you, and your greatest gifts eat gifts or from opening your heart excuse my brain but, but <laughs> up, yeah but my words ever since i've had covid two years ago it's really tough so please forgive me if i if i what's my words anyway this is saying to me that either somebody out there is going to find love or looking for love especially you scorpio you go through a lot and you are intense open your heart because if you don't it's only going to come back on you Open that heart, honey. Open that heart, and you will find the right situation for you, either love or love of something. Uh, Stag, you have the Ace of Swords, uh, another victory card. A lot of victory cards today in this. Yes. In this. There are, like, no bad cards, so hopefully we can keep that train, that train going. But 
Um, you know, I think that the Ace of Swords is uh, Sagittarius is inner truth. I think Sagittarius is like a river, but like a reverse river. It's like, you know, rivers have all those tributaries that like run into the main river. I think that's what it, the energy has been like for Sagittarius. They've been like spread out and now they're kind of flowing into the, the, the main channel of the river, right? And I think that it's time for uh, Sagittarius to like uh, pick the things that they want to be part of their life and uh, to get rid of the rest. Like you've explored everything else. Now it's time to focus. Love that because guess what I pulled for for Sagittarius? Simplify your life. Those rivers are running back to you, everyone. Simplify your life. Get rid of what challenges or what does not work for you. It's time to get rid of it and time to only let the river flow to you with what's going to be positive for you. Uh, Capricorn, you have the Six of Cups. I love, um, you know, Six of Cups could be love. I, I think Capricorns are, this is like your year to open up to love. So, um, you know, that makes sense. And also Six of Cups is like a gift from the universe. Pluto leaving your sign is going to be a gift from the universe. So <laughs> come November, I think Capricorn in particular is going to feel a lot better. Uh, Pluto and Capricorn, I think, is particularly like difficult. If Pluto is as close to Earth as it can be uh, when it's in Capricorn. So, you know, it's kind of like a little bit more of a challenging um, thing to deal with, especially if you are Capricorn. So I really see this as a gift for Capricorn. I love that I've got a Capricorn son-in-law that, oh my God, it's going through some things just recently. And, oh, he will be happy to hear <laughs> that it's the base coming to an end. Although I don't know that I'll watch the show, but at least if he does here. And I have uplift your thoughts. I love this because it's a lily. Uplift your thoughts, Capricorn, because they can go pretty low right now. You're an earth sign and they're just, you ground them right to earth. Now let's ground them and get rid of them. So when you see something that doesn't fit you or you're, you're thinking of something that's not really helping your energy, if you ground it and then let release it into the, you know, into the earth, just let it go. You'll feel better. Uh, Aquarius, you have the six of pentacles, uh, six of pentacles is all about fairness and like what you give to, I think things are pretty good for Aquarius and Pluto, Cap Pluto and Aquarius will be pretty good for you, Aquarius. So uh, it's not like Pluto and Capricorn. And, uh, you know, I think what you invest in is like what you're going to receive. So I, I literally feel you're in a time where you can just like pick what you want, put energy into it and man, you know, get it basically. So, uh, that's what I would do if I were an Aquarius. I, I basically am. So there you go. I love that. And then I have a, one that says you are healed. So I love this because I know some Aquariuses that are going to, through some health issues. It says you are healed. And I love this. The healing you've prayed for is on its way. So I love that for Aquarius. Aquarius, just know that if you're going through some things and you wanted to know the answer, you were going to call up and ask, you're being healed. Things are going to start working out for you yeah, mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally. And, 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 and I love that for you. Uh, Pisces, uh, just like cancer, uh, you show up as yourself, um, the high priestess. I think it's a great time to tap into your intuition. You know, the North node eventually will be moving into Pisces. I can't remember exactly when that is. I think it's like sometime next year or whatever. Um, so, but don't quote me on that. And, uh, the North node in your sign will be pretty good for you. Pisces. I think that it will heighten your intuition. And, you know, even though we're talking about this time frame, I still think like I would start working on it right now. Um, you know, tapping into your intuition more, uh, doing more intuitive uh, exercises, um, meditating, all that stuff is what I would do. But uh, it's a time of secrets for Pisces. So uh, the high priestess is very secretive. I would look into secrets, like anything that you don't know about, um, anything you're, uh, any mysteries you're interested in. It's a great time to look into that stuff. I love that. I picked unity. Unity is exactly you. And you just read about, and it says, you're spiritually connected to everything through the universe. If that isn't you, and that isn't Pisces, I mean, how can you look at Pisces and say this card wouldn't be? Mm -hmm. You are connected. You saw all the zodiacs. You're the old man of the zodiac or the old woman of the zodiac. You've been through everything, and you're spiritually connected to everything. And I love this card for you. So I, 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 I love that. I feel like everybody... Can you, um, can you pull the Pisces, the card Pisces out again? Uh, I just shuffled it back in uh, here. <laughs> can you, uh, you, it, well, it was a high priestess. I can remember it. Can you take out the high priestess? Because I'm going to tell you why. And I hate to do this because we'll go into questions next. But lots of people get very uh, hung up on the high priestess. 
Of course. So She's probably going to be the last card here. <laughs> well, that's a, if you can give us an insight just a little bit on the high priest. Okay, yeah, it was literally the card on the top. <laughs> well, hey, it's just for, uh, for you to pull. It's for you to look at because high priestess is, has a lot of secrets and she secretly hid herself from you, Chris. Yep. So what about it? Yes. Can you please go through or tell us something that nobody really looks, you don't have to go through the whole thing if you don't want to, but a lot of people and card readers get hung up with the high priestess. Why? And what are you seeing in the high priestess that you can give us a little bit of a knowledge about? I, I think something people, nobody, not very many readers pay attention to is she has these pomegranates behind her and also these date palms. So the date palms, uh, dates are survivors. They live in the desert and uh, you know, so the date palms in the tarot can represent abundance, but they can also represent being a survivor. They can also uh, represent making a sacrifice as well. Um, the pomegranates are the fruit of the underworld. So, uh, you know, th there is like an underworld connection with the high priestess. That's why she represents secrets. Part, part of the reason uh, there's like a theory that uh, it's just a theory, but there's a theory that her back is to the world. So she's like completely shut out the world and she's tapping into her inner voice. And so sometimes I think the high priestess can even represent uh, needing to shut out the world so that you can listen to your inner voice. Um, so, yeah, those are some of the uh, secrets, I think, about her. I love that because that, that was one of the cards that hangs me up. Why do you see the, the two pillars? And then we're going to go into. Yeah, it's uh, this is uh, these are the two pillars outside the Temple of Solomon, uh, Boaz and uh, Jack in or Yak in or however you say it. And so I look at the two pillars. She's sitting between these. I think it means like in God, your strength or something like that. I can't remember exactly uh, what it means, but uh, I look at it also as her being in a neutral uh, perspective. She doesn't look at things as black or white. She's sitting right in the middle. And even actually, if you do research on um, the whole uh, Boaz, Jack and thing here, that the two pillars kind of represents um, being more uh, neutral, looking at things from a more neutral uh, perspective. I love that. So you just cleared up. Three of my questions. So everybody, <laughs> you, uh, for all you intuitive readers out there and all you tarot readers out there and even ones that are just curious, that was a card. That's one of the cards that hangs me out the most. We've got another subject we're going to talk about <laughs> that's going to be really. I never tell Chris. Yeah, I never, I never know. <laughs> that's because I want to see his eyes when I yeah. bring the subject. And I would think that you would want to see this live. So there's no mm -hmm. scripted. Right. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please have a fabulous weekend. And Chris, don't do anything I want to do. I will. And, <laughs> oh, you will. Okay. I will. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're going to say that you can. Anyway, is there anything you would like to say to the audience? Go. No, have fun this weekend. I think everybody needs to have more fun. So all the readings it, have been very, too, way too serious. So I would do something I fun. Love it. Please go to Chris Rack, his channel on YouTube. Go to Minnow Pond. Check out his free, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, in there and you get to see inside what chris, chris thinks we'll be doing it on the show we'll be bringing cards it might not be in order because i'm going to ask him another question this will be about the minor after we do okay <laughs> this will be pretty cool and it might not be next week but i'm going to surprise him anyway i want to thank you chris it's always a pleasure and an honor to have you on our show yes so same yeah. bye have a good bye. day thank you